Hey guys, this is Ed Rowe. Today we're going to be checking out the infamous DAO hack. This is the story of where $50 million worth of Ethereum was stolen. And we'll be going over the code that was exploited as well as how you can easily prevent this type of hack from happening to your contract. What happened? In 2016, a coding framework that was developed open source by the Slock IT team launched a decentralized autonomous organization and called it the DAO. This decentralized autonomous organization was a novel idea where investors could vote on proposals based on a consensus instead of individuals who own the organization. And so because of that, they managed to raise upwards of $150 million worth of Ethereum. However, a few lines of mistake in the code allowed a lone hacker to steal those $50 million worth of Ethereum. And the type of hack that the hacker used is called a re-entrancy attack. And it is one of the most common type of hacks in Ethereum development, where someone can keep recursively calling the same function over and over to drain the contract from any funds. Now let's examine the lines of code that caused this problem. So here's the original function split DAO of which the hacker exploited as well as the related withdraw rewards function. But as you can see, it's a bit too complicated to see the vulnerability. So instead, let's look at a simplified version. So here we have a withdraw function this withdraw function uses the message.sender.call.value function to transfer the entire balance to the caller. And then there is a require check to see if the transfer succeeded or not. And finally, we set the balance of the sender to zero after the transfer so that the sender presumably has no more balance to transfer anymore. The problem with this is because of message dot sender dot call dot value. This transfer function calls the fallback function, which allows for the transfer to happen. But now let's say we now have a proxy contract that the attacker wrote. Now, if you take a look at the contract, the first thing that they will do is they will set the message dot sender as the owner of the contract. So that message dot sender is referring to this contract and this will allow them to draw the funds for their contract. Second, they will create a call withdraw function with the DAO contract address to withdraw that function. And finally, they will override the fallback function like so, and will call the call withdraw function if the balance is less than 10,000 ether. Now let's cover the sequence of events that allows the attacker to continuously call the withdraw function to endlessly drain the contract. So the first thing that the attacker will do is they will call the call withdraw function. This call withdraw function will input the DAO contract address so we can call the withdraw function from there. Now, if we go to the withdraw function over here, we will hit the message.sender.call.value function, which is supposed to trigger the fallback function. So what is expected to happen is that this fallback function should be the fallback of the DAO contract with the expectation that will transfer the balance normally. However, in this scenario, the malicious proxy contract overrides this fallback function over here. And now we will call the fallback function of this proxy contract we will, which will trigger the call withdraw function again until the balance is 10,000 ether. Now the call withdraw function gets triggered again, and this withdraw, call withdraw function will trigger the withdraw balance of the DAO contract once again. And it's going to go back to the withdraw function. It's going to go back to the message.sender.call.value, which is the fallback function. And that fallback function will get overridden again by the malicious proxy contract, and that will call, trigger the call withdraw. And this will continuously happen until the contract or the DAO contract's balance is zero. Take a look here. This is the problem. The balance of the message sender is set to zero after we call the fallback function, which is the thing 
that actually transfers. So the balance of the message that sender is continuously not zero as the wallet keeps draining, and it only gets set to zero after the malicious proxy contract takes all the money away from the original contract. Unfortunately, this type of hack is quite common because if you do not know about it, it is very easy to fall prey to this problem. However, if you do know about it, the solution is actually quite simple. In this case, there's two solutions to this. The first solution is to use transfer or send functions instead. However, the second solution is a much more broader and more flexible approach and, the, and is the recommended way to prevent any re-entrancy attack. And this is the check effects interaction pattern. So if you take a look at this code, the require statements come first, and then the effects, which is anything that has any side effects, or in other words, anything that changes storage variables like balance here, comes second. And finally, anything that interacts or triggers other functions comes last. If you follow this pattern, you are guaranteed to not run into any re-entrancy exploits barring extremely complicated logic if you do it that way. If you want, you can read up more on this website in the description link below. How do we apply the check effects interaction pattern to our previous example of the DAO contract? So let's take a look. If you take a look over here, there's only one thing we have to change, and that is to move the balance message.sender equals zero above the message.sender.call function. This is an example of moving the effects before the interaction. It's one line of change, one simple change, and it almost always is just about ordering your logic correctly. But also just a note, um, so you don't get confused, is that this require statement does happen after the interactions, but that's only specifically because of message.sender.call.value is set up so that we need to check if success is set to true or not to see if it succeeded. But if we were to add more require statements for other logic, they should definitely go at the beginning of the function. There you have it. This type of hack is a very common one and it is the hack that people know about when we talk about the DAO. It's a very infamous hack and you should always use the check effects interaction pattern so you'll be safe from any re-entrancy attacks. Anyways, like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. See you in the next one.